there a weasel back here? Good morning. Another new week is here. We had a fantastic weekend. It's time to get back to work. Today, we're going to take out the knuckle boom truck and bring some poles from Winnipeg down to Morden. The week can begin now. <clears throat> I'm exhausted. We had a busy weekend. I could have done with about uh, six more hours of sleep. <laughs> uh, it was a good weekend though. Oh, uh, I guess we spend so much time in the sun. Whenever you spend a lot of time in the sun, it just drains you. Eh? Not complaining, not complaining. We'll catch up tonight. I'm feeling all right. I'm just, it's just Monday, you know. So like I said last Monday, uh, the first five days after the weekend are always the hardest. So before you know it, it'll be the weekend again. So yes, we are in the pickup this morning. Not gonna take the motorcycle in today. Uh, the clouds are clearing up pretty quickly, but when I woke up, it was raining. And uh, I slept as long as I could. So uh, I'm a little bit more in a rush than usual. Not too bad, but I just hopped in the pickup and went, nah, whatever. We'll ride in tomorrow. Like I was telling you earlier, uh, today we take out the knuckle boom truck 3106. I have to take a pole trailer and go into Winnipeg, pick up a load of poles. I think they're gonna load me with their crane there. And then I take those poles all the way out to Morden to a job site. And I'm gonna have to use the claw and unload the poles at the job site there. The first time I'm doing this on my own since I was trained for it. I'm not nervous, but I'm pretty excited. Uh, it's something different, and I'm glad that uh, I'm broadening my skill set. Like I always say, I want to be as useful as possible. The more I know how to do, the more things they can get me to do. And when you say it like that, to a lazy person, that would be a bad thing, right? But I like to be uh, I like to be useful, so that when I go to the yard and there's nothing to do for my regular work, like if there's no work to be done, well, hey, I can do other things too. Maybe there's work in other areas, in other places, in other departments. So the only thing we don't do really, as far as I know, unless if it's some kind of uh, some kind of thing I don't know about, we don't do any refrigerated freight. We don't have any reefer trailers. We have, we have our fingers in almost everything else, except reefers. <laughs> Let's get to work. Let's go have some fun today. Let's go start up the old Kenworth, the old beast. Hook up to a trailer and let's... Let's not make a fool of ourselves today. Let's, let's do the job good. Let's do it right. Here's our truck for today. Start loading my stuff up. I gotta get a few things out of my truck just uh, down over there yet. And put it in here, like my chargers and Bluetooth and stuff. And we'll be on the way. Feel like we're old school trucking today, eh? It's a little bit of an older Kenworth. I'll have to do a little research and find out what year this truck actually is, but it's a beast. So I've got a pole trailer behind me, it's empty. I've got the crane behind me. 
attached to the frame. And a little bit of a sleeper behind us here. Uh, we'll be using that when we do overnights. So there's two of us that run this truck. And uh, the other guy will probably use it, well, from what I've heard, it'll be about 50-50. So today we're not going to need the sleeper because we're just going to go pick up poles here in Winnipeg and bring them down to Morton. Going to ease me into it a little bit. Since this thing has a 20,000 pound front axle, you can really tell that it's uh, <laughs> a little bit more of an aggressive stance can handle a lot more weight than a regular truck. This guy's just gonna drive right beside me. All right, bud, figure it out. You can either go behind me or you can go in front of me. You're gonna go behind me? All right, I'm okay with that. Well, he's over there grabbing poles for my trailer. So they load me up with that big guy. You throw him in here. And then I tie them down in here, and then when we get to the job site, or to the site where we're going, we unload it with this. This is the truck we're in today. Uh, like I said before, I'll have to do some research to find out the year of this truck. It's a little bit of an older truck. An older truck. There's a bed in the back for overnights. I'm not too sure how many overnights I'm going to be doing. I don't mind doing them once in a while, but I, I know that the overnights that this truck does, it's like one, maybe two nights on the road. And uh, the other driver usually takes care of those. So I don't know how many of those I'm going to be doing. I think I'm gonna be in this truck all next week because he'll be on holidays. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Wait and see, I've told them I don't mind doing it overnight here and there. Might find ourselves going up to Thompson or who knows where. Thompson is far north in Manitoba, it's about eight hours north. So you'd go up there, uh, spend the night in the truck and then come back the next day. I really don't know what to tell you guys. I really don't know what's going on. He's got another load of poles there. Gonna throw it onto my trailer. You see it in the mirror there? He grabs what? One, two, three, four, five, six at a time, I think. Oh! Yeah, you feel that for sure. You definitely feel that. That's a beast of a machine. And obviously they don't have those handy machines everywhere we go, hence the crane. Or maybe we'll call it the claw. Or the knuckle boom or the picker truck. I don't know what the proper name is for, because it's called a knuckle boom. But people also refer to it as the picker truck. People refer to it as the claw truck, the blue truck, 3106. There's many names for this girl. Many names. I will mention one thing though, the other driver on this truck seems to be very neat and organized. So when I leave this truck, I must also leave it very neat and organized because I know that there's nothing more frustrating than spending all the time in the world organizing your truck and all your equipment and then someone else uses it and it's everywhere, all over the place and dirty and everything. So you better remember to make sure that we leave it as clean as we found it, if not better, leave it better than we found it. There is no passenger seat in this truck. It's just a one seater truck. So, you know, I've got my backpack here, my hat, sweater, just in case it gets cold. I don't think it's going to get cold today, but sweater, my lunch, phone, safety glasses, sunglasses, all my stuff. So I've sort of got it all organized, like just sort of thrown in here for now, but uh, have it as organized as I can. I've got an extra garbage bag just in case I brought my garbage can. Oh, I've got two extra garbage bags apparently. <laughs> oh, we can have a party. I didn't know I brought two. Okay. Just in case, so all your garbage goes into the garbage can. I see we have some artwork here beside the road. 
I stopped here in Brunkild, Manitoba, down Highway 3. I'm just going to do a load check here. I pulled into a little uh, pullout in town. I'm just going to make sure that all these straps are still tight. I'm guessing they're probably going to need another notch or two in them. It's because as you travel down the bumpy road, this truck is a little bit rough. You can tell it's a heavy-duty truck because it runs pretty rough. Uh, as it bounces down the road, the logs settle, right? Which means that the straps get loose and need to be tightened. See? That should be tight. Stop. Took three notches. Yikes. And I already stopped in Oak Bluff once, about 20 minutes that way, to tighten them. So this is the second time I've stopped already. Took an extra two notches on that. Ooh, that's loud. This one's still tight. Hmm. Oh, I get one more out of it. So I've got some straps coming this way, some straps going that way. I'm going to go tighten the ones on the other side as well, and then we can get out of here. The pullout in this road, or on this, in this town, is just on one side here. Oh, there's a truck coming, we'll wait for him. This is sort of like a little pullout area here on this side. You can tell a lot of other drivers stop here to tighten up as well. Okay, let's quickly do this. Just got a couple of straps here. One more there, so this end is still tight. Yeah, that one needs tightening. Two, three, wow. Four. Okay. There we go. What's this doing here? I don't want to run this over. Okay, we're all tightened up again. Put this back in there. You really want to make sure you stop a couple of times. I stopped just outside of Winnipeg, which was probably about 10 minutes down the road, like I told you in Oak Bluff. Tightened it again, drove another 20 minutes down the road to Brunk Hills here. Tightened it again. I'll probably stop one more time before we get to Morden. Morden's about an hour away yet or so. Give or take, maybe less than that from here. Just to make sure you... I wanna make sure everything's tight. And while you're out here, just... Make sure everything else is in order. I don't know why these bungees are here, but the other driver has put them there. I'm wondering if that's to stop this from opening on its own, but why would it open on its own? It has a latch. It was there, so, uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. I don't like how this is all just cluttered here. I feel like I've got a lot of clutter, but just in case, just in case. And back there, I haven't gone back there yet. I have no reason to go back there, but it's just a small little sleeper, just enough for one person to, you know, get some rest on the road. And I guess the other guy's got a garbage bag over the back window because there's no curtain, obviously. So don't want that light shining in your face if you're trying to get some sleep in the, during the day. Okay, let's, uh, while we're here, let's see how far away we are from Morden. Uh, approximately we're 73 kilometers away 46 minutes so about 45 minutes and we'll be there we'll probably probably stop once more to tighten the straps on the way there I'll keep an eye on them in the mirror okay. 
least the air conditioning works in this truck. <laughs> All right, to get back on the road now. These two vehicles here, and we'll drag our butts back on there. somebody here and figure out exactly which pile they want these on. Get into the yard for now. Go to here in the open. Pretty sure I'm going to be unloading onto one of these piles here. I don't know if I got to go in there or here, so let's go figure that out and then we'll get the crane set up. Start unloading. The fun part. <laughs> All right, so I found who's in charge here. I also found a fly. You're not my friend, get out of here. Get out of here, can't get out of here. You have the whole world to fly around and you wanna fly right in the truck. No, pick somewhere else. Go, go bug someone else. Flies.
Okay, so I gotta get in there and unload in that far pile off on the right there. Let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna have to back up a little bit, get a better angle of this. That trailer's kind of in my way there. How am I gonna get in there? That's tight. Okay, this truck doesn't turn very sharp either. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Think I can make that corner? Yeesh, that's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight. I have to, I have to figure it out. I don't know if I can make this corner. Okay, I'm gonna have to wiggle back and forth with this truck because this truck uh, has difficulty turning. I don't wanna hit that little black utility trailer there. That's a terrible spot to park that. I just don't think I'm gonna make it. I really don't think I can get my trailer around this here. I can tell you right now already, probably not. But maybe, but maybe, hey, you never know. Oh, it looks like it's gonna be a little close. No, not gonna make it, not gonna make it. I'm gonna show you this here. See, we're gonna hit these poles here. We really need that black trailer over there moved. You don't wanna run into these things here. Man, I wonder who parked that there. Well, we'll just keep wiggling. I'll get her in there. Don't tell me I can't, because I'll show you I will. Don't tell me I can't, because I'll show you I can. Don't threaten me with a good time. I'll get her in here. Let's see how close we can get here. Not even close. I wonder if I can pick that thing up and move it. Uh, trailer's going to be in the way. It's definitely gonna be in the way. I wonder if I can move it by hand. Some of these trailers are so light you can just move them by hand, eh? Just push it back. Just push it back in there. Because this is where we need to come. I need to come down here and swing in right through here to make it in there. So, let's see. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to move this thing. That's a heavy trailer. Well, shoot. I'm going to have to come as close to this as I can and have my trailer like right along here. So I'm gonna back out, try to get it along there. Oh, the joys of trucking, right? The joys of trucking. Uh, I 
my trailer all the way in there. Exactly like that. yourself just right. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna pull the trailer over further this way yet. Really wish that trailer wasn't there. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Pull our way just past here. As close to this thing as we can. Without hitting it. See that there? Oh, don't hit it. Don't hit it. Just want to get close. Not too close, right? The airbags on this truck like to make a lot of noise when they go down. Okay, I'm gonna deflate the air in the trailer as well so that we're working with a more stable surface here. I'm gonna climb up there and get these poles off. Well, I guess we gotta take the straps off first. You get it. You get it. Release the air in here. There we go. We're working with a. If the air is in the suspension while you're taking the poles off, the trailer's all wobbly, right? You don't want that. Is there a weasel back here? 